We're joined on the line now by ESPN basketball analyst Jimmy Dykes, and you've been covering college basketball from coast to coast, Jimmy. And I know that you've called a couple Arkansas games this year, specifically Texas Tech. But I want to ask you first and foremost your initial reaction when you heard about the news about Mike Anderson yesterday. Well, the coaching changes don't surprise me anymore at, at any level. And you look at the SEC now in men's basketball, it's, it, it's win or – uh, winner get fired is kind of the message being sent right now with the job openings that are out there. You know, this was Mike's eighth year, I believe. You look at Bryce Drew and just his third year at Vanderbilt and wasn't winning. Didn't the, the, the choice was made to make a change, and so it didn't catch me by surprise because I know how the business works. Um, but you have to look at Mike's career and the amount of wins that he's had before he ever got to Arkansas. You know, the guy can coach. Mm -hmm. You know, he's never had a losing record. Uh, never been even a, a, a sniff or a hint of NCAA violations with his program. Those kind of things hold up really well right now for a guy that's in the coaching profession that, that wants to stay in it. And I know Mike's going to get a job quickly. It'll probably be a good job because of all those things I just mentioned. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, Arkansas is in the SEC now where the, the, the bar has been raised a high, high level over the last couple of years. And the hiring of guys like Rick Barnes and what he's done at Tennessee, what Pearl has done at Auburn, uh, just keep on going down the line. And, and now those administrations are, are feeling the pressure of we want to win, we want to win the right way, and we want our fan base to be you know, thrilled with the direction we're going. So um, I know there was some apathy that has set in with, in the fan base. Um, I felt that I didn't – I don't think I went to Arkansas twice this year and I was gone. Out of, the, out of the state five mm -hmm. out of seven days, but that's kind of the general feeling. But, uh, you know, that's a young Arkansas team this year, Alyssa, that was in a lot of close games. And, you know, I did their game at Texas Tech. They could have easily won that one. And Texas mm -hmm. Tech's now the Final Four contender. So um, close games, losses, all those things, and, you know, what could have, would have, should have been. At the end of the day, Hunter Yurchek said, we need to change at Arkansas. And now if you're an Arkansas fan, you have to hope that the right guy is brought in. It's a critical hire right now for the Razorbacks. Well, you look and you talk about the bar in the SEC. The thing that stands out to me is you look at a guy like Kermit Davis and what he did at Ole Miss in a year after Andy Kennedy left. You've got an atmosphere right now in college athletics where people want results and they want results right now. And you have Kermit Davis who's doing what he's doing at Ole Miss. Do you think this is a very impatient time that we're in right now in athletics? Yes, I know it is. It's a, it, it's a very impatient time, and it's going to start with the uh, uh, university president mm -hmm. and his relationship with the athletic director and the athletic director's relationship with, with any coach on his campus. And, of course, Hunter didn't hire Mike, and, uh, you know, Steinmetz didn't hire Mike. So mm -hmm. you, you, you don't have that 100% loyalty uh, at all times when that's the situation. I'm not saying that. They, they didn't over there, but we have a whole lot better chance of, of wavering through a tough year or two when the people above you were the ones that, that, that brought you in. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, the, that, the, the instant success is not easy. Kermit did a fabulous job this year. He and heard some good players. He did a great job. Uh, I think the thing that, that probably got Mike at the end of the day was it's his eighth year, and they've been to three NCAAs and haven't gotten, you know, to that next level where – the program look like they're back being nationally relevant. And mm -hmm. I think that's what the Arkansas fan base wants. I think that's what they expect. They've been there before. That's what a lot of fan base wants. But not, not all of them are capable of doing it. But Arkansas is. Like, they they have the, the, the resources. They've got the league. They've got the facility. They've got the fan base uh, to be nationally relevant in men's college basketball every year and that's going to be now the, where this next hire comes into play do you can you get a guy in here that puts arkansas on the national map every year I'm not talking about a final four run every year but they're in that conversation of they're always in the tournament it's just a matter how deep they go that should be the goal of the next hire well, you look at that next hire, a lot of names in this bowl right now. The one that stands out to people at the top of their list is Kelvin Sampson at Houston. People have put Chris Beard out there because he used to coach at Little Rock for a year before he went to Texas Tech. There's also Buzz Williams over at Virginia Tech who's doing very well for himself as well. 
When you look at what Arkansas needs and some of those guys that I mentioned, do you see a fit at all or a possibility at all? Or is there someone on your radar that you think would be good at Arkansas? Well, I, I know all three of those guys relatively really well. Um, I, I think I think Buzz Williams, I think Texas A&M is waiting for his season to get done. <laughs> And I think he'll be the he'll the, the they want to hear no from him first. Sure. I, I think I think that's the play for Texas A and M. Uh, I think Kelvin Sampson was is the first one on the list at Arkansas, and he's going to wait till Kelvin gets done, and decide does he want to stay at Houston and continue to build build that. And he's got a lot of reasons to stay there. I'm telling you, when you're in an NBA city, and you're recruiting in a town like Houston, and you're in a league that you can you can win and get in the NCAA tournament every year, and you've got it rolling. That's not an easy job to walk away from. Uh, and people think that'd be an automatic go from Houston to Arkansas. It's just not that easy. That, mm-hmm. that, that will not be an easy call. Um, I don't. I, and Chris Beard is as good a coach as there is in the country. He's as good as anybody out there. I did two of their games this year and one last year, and I was down in that program earlier in the fall and spent a day with them and their staff. He's outstanding. But he's locked into that, that, that Texas – part of the country out there his, his daughters are out there with him mm-hmm. now, i'm not saying that he wouldn't move but um if arkansas were to hire any one of those three guys you've hit a home run i just don't know how how easy that's going to be to do because you have to realize the texas a&m job is a really good job uh the, Al- the alabama job i think is a really good job the lsu job i think is going to open and that's a really good job uh the ucla job i mean that's you know, there's a pecking order now with those head coaches that are looking to move, and you want to get the best job out there first and work your way down. And I'm not sure where Arkansas is on the national level in terms of is it job number one, two, three, four, or five that's open right now. You know, I, I think that leads perfectly into my question because, as you just mentioned there, LSU, possibly Alabama, Vanderbilt, Texas A&M, all openings right now. How is Arkansas going to sell its program and make it a program that a coach is going to want to go to? Yeah, that's going to be – that's going to have to come from the conversation with the athletic director, you know, and, and I know I know Hunter's got a good feel for this state. Uh, uh, he should now be in here for – I know he hasn't been here quite a year yet, but it doesn't take long to understand the the passion of the Razorback fans and, and what the Razorback Nation is all about. And most college coaches know that Bud Walton Arena, when it's full, it's one of the top four or five places to play in all of college ball. I, I still feel like that. I've been to every arena in the country over the last 21 years, and when Bud Walton is rocking, it's as good an atmosphere as there is anywhere out there. And I think that's the first selling point is that that facility the fan base the league that we're in uh, the fact that the sec right now has four teams still in the sweet 16 and they've won multiple national championships over the last 15 or 20 years uh, the money that's in this league generated from the sec network and football playoffs and all the facilities i mean it's a big time job but there's other big time jobs out there so with any coaching hire, you know, even you know, when I was hired, it comes down to the, the conversation you have with, with, with the person making the hire and can they convince you that we can get it done here and this is why. Mm-hmm. And if Hunter's able to convince the right guy, then bam, you're off and running. Uh, but he has to have his sales pitch ready. He has, has, has to have his facts backed up because those head coaches are smart. They do their homework. They call people. They'll call me. They'll, they'll, they'll call people that know, and they, they want to know, tell me about this job. What? Why should I take it, and why shouldn't I? And a good AD like Hunter is, I know, is going to be able to answer all those questions. Well, Jimmy, I tell you what, not a lot of people know the Arkansas program like you do, the state like you do, and college basketball like you do. So we really appreciate your time and your input. Okay, Alyssa, have fun with Finn when you get home. I appreciate it. Take care, Jimmy. <laughs> Bye-bye.